Let's talk about gatekeeping in the knitting community because there is a lot to say about that. I think yarn artists are like a family. Once it's cool, once it's like you would like to kill each other. I feel like I'm rambling a lot and I'm not sure if my points are coming across, but hopefully. Hi, my name is Lisa and I make crochet and knitting videos here on my channel and welcome back to a new video. And today I am going to film something that I have planned a while back and then kind of forgot about and now remembered again and that is a little knit and chat type of video about gatekeeping in the knitting and crocheting community and how accessible it is and while I'm gonna talk about that I am gonna knit on my here it is my Ingrid sweater I made quite a lot of progress with it now so I just joined the body together you can again not really see it and I will be knitting on this while discussing some of the things you sent in on my Instagram page and some of my own views on this whole topic since I figured it would be really interesting to talk about it and I have quite some opinions about it myself so yeah let's just go and let's get started I have to open the pattern because uh, for those of you who don't know this is the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knits some people will ask me about it I always love petite knit patterns a lot, so this one is no exception. <laughs> and I just need to open a pattern to see what I need to do. Okay, so the reason I wanted to talk about gatekeeping is because I am a fairly new knitter in this world. I started in 2020, so it's been like two years, uh, which I think is relatively new. Maybe some of you think of it differently but I would not consider myself a beginner in knitting but definitely new to the knitting world and the knitting community and when you are sharing stuff online that always means that people have an opinion about it and that's why I really wanted to talk about this phenomenon of gatekeeping and for those of you who don't know what gatekeeping is gatekeeping is like the activity of um, controlling something and usually like limiting the access to something so in the knitting community, this is, in my opinion, quite a big problem. But feel free to discuss your opinions in the comments because I know this is a controversial topic and that everybody's opinions are valid and this is just my view and uh, I thought it would just be very interesting to talk about it with you guys and to share my thoughts on this. The primary experience that I had and why I'm making this video is because of a comment that I got this summer. I love you all a lot and the comments are always amazing and you are so sweet, all of you. So really, thank you so much for all the kindness that you are always um, spreading. But I got this comment a couple months ago and it was about my video where I talked about sock knitting. I think it was called like all about sock knitting, something like that. And someone said like, oh, I'm pretty sick of hearing new knitters talk like they suddenly know it all and make videos about this type of stuff. And I thought it was very interesting to have that comment. First of all, I do not take stuff like that personal at all, but I find it very interesting to see why people think it is and why they think that if you are new, or if you are not as experienced as others, your advice is not valid. And that I found very interesting and I shared about it on my stories and I had some um, very interesting conversations with people about it. Mainly people said that this person um, did not really understand the, the goal of that video, but that's completely fine. It did really interest me the way that they think and this whole phenomenon and it's not the only time that I have been, had an experience like this and what I found most interesting as well was that a lot of other knitters that also share their work online DM me as well saying that they had similar experiences like this so yeah that's an interesting experience <laughs> and this in no way is something to this specific person I really validate their opinions and I, I think I answered to it which is also a controversial thing, whether you should answer or not, but usually I like to answer because I want to not start a discussion, but I just want to express my own opinion on it. And I think I said that if you don't want to watch the videos that I make, feel free to do that. Like, I don't really care. I love it if you watch it, but if you don't enjoy it, don't watch it. Like, that's the way it works, basically. But I think I said something about... Um, that I do 
do believe that everybody's advice can be valid and as long as you're open about your the position that you're in which hopefully i am i usually share about the fact that i do not know everything that i am also a relatively new knitter and that Sometimes that can be even more valid to share your work online if you are relatively new because you might see stuff that very experienced knitters don't see and Yeah, I think I truly believe that on the internet there is space for everyone and everybody's Knitting and crocheting levels and opinions and anything like that and as long as you are respectful to others and open about your situation and are self-aware or try to be and try to improve I feel like there is space for everyone and that everybody has the right to share their work online and that your level doesn't really matter so much and that you can give advice whether you are a beginner or a very experienced knitter it doesn't really uh, make that much of a difference it's just for a different type of purpose okay so that's like a little short insight on why I started this conversation with myself and then with the people in my DMs and on my Instagram stories and stuff like that but let's get to the stuff that you sent in it's been a while since you sent it in so maybe your opinions have changed in the meantime but I'm still gonna discuss um, those things okay first of all let me start with the fact that I asked if people uh, felt like welcome in the knitting community once they started sharing their work online and the majority of people said that everybody was super nice and that everything was very welcoming and I totally agree with that like this community has been so welcoming and just the nicest people ever and that I really really adore that people are interacting with each other a lot and are always sending like me and everybody else the nicest stuff ever so that I really agree with that it the majority of the people are really really nice and it is fairly accessible to get into the community and be accepted and yeah immediately just I felt a lot of love and I'm very um, thankful for that but I heard also from like uh, a pattern maker that I really really adore she told me that in the beginning people would like refer to her only as an Instagram knitter and that it was pretty pretty tough crowd to be accepted in and I could completely imagine that like I think that sharing your work online like um, just putting it on photos on Instagram that's where it's still okay-ish that people don't really have a big opinion on it the problem is when you start putting your work really out there so publishing patterns making videos giving advice I think that's when people start to have give you more critique and are maybe sometimes even to an extent mm, I wouldn't say jealous but I think that the moment that you start making money from something that's when people start to be very critical and that's fair because you are profiting from something and of course people can be critical about the fact whether that is valid or not but on the other hand you put a lot of work in your patterns or in your videos or in your Instagram page or doing an advertisement or anything like that and then getting critique is yeah it's pretty pretty tough and mm, I would say that in general the world of like making profit from knitting is something very interesting and mm, not I wouldn't say controversial but it's just a bit difficult to like to see what people's responses to it are because in the world of pattern publishing it can be pretty hard to get through there like to get to make a pattern that is oh wait I'm making mistakes it can be pretty difficult if you have no following to start publishing patterns and that's really bad like I wish it would have been different but it's not and that's where people start to become not as nice but this pattern maker um, she also said that from what she's heard from her BIPOC friends that compared uh, what she experienced compared to what she experienced her experience was quite pleasant and that is something that I really really don't want to forget about that I myself am in a super privileged position and that my experiences are in like I can in no way compare myself to all my BIPOC knitters out there and 
I don't know, in general this community is pretty welcoming, but I also am very aware of my own uh, privileges in this situation. Yeah, someone said as well, I opened a shop and I was so embarrassed to share because I don't have many followers. That uh, is something that I can really imagine. It's sometimes hard to compare processes because everybody does it in a different way. But yeah, it, like I said before, it's definitely a lot easier to already have an audience and then start selling stuff. But also not everybody wants to, for example, make videos or um, uh, share a lot of their work online and they just want to make patterns and publish those. So that's something that's very difficult and I definitely can see why you would feel a bit embarrassed but I think that it's the same with everything that you publish online that in the beginning it always feels a bit embarrassing because you feel like nobody's watching but if you enjoy it yourself a lot and will keep going that for sure will change and eventually you get there and also don't do it for others do it do it for yourself someone said also that i feel like um, knitting is not very accessible because buying yarn is very expensive at least in my location yeah this was for me in the beginning a big problem because i am a student and that means that i do not have a lot of money now it's changed a bit since i can make a little bit of profit from my youtube and my pattern sales and i really like to invest part of that money into my knitting projects as well just because I enjoy knitting and crocheting so much but in the beginning I definitely did not have a big budget and I was seeing all these people with spending so much money on their knits and felt like it was not accessible at all and that it, I was not able to make a nice looking garment and people would shame you for using acrylics yeah I just do not like that vibe at all where we are comparing each, like comparing each other so much and are judging each other so much for the choices we made like you don't know what type of position someone is in and not everybody's able to afford a very expensive like knitting for olive yarns uh, and that's very valid and let's try to keep it nice Someone said, also, I think that we can make patterns more inclusive and I hope that's something we can continue. Yes, size inclusivity in terms of gatekeeping there, that's also a big, a big thing. I love that there are creators out there now who are publishing a lot of patterns that are size inclusive and lately on YouTube I see it a lot as well where people are making videos about patterns that they recommend that are size inclusive. I will link a few of them down in, this, in the description and I really, really admire that people are making that content because yes, size inclusivity is just the most important thing ever when making patterns. And I have to say that so far I'm, I have published only two patterns, a sock pattern and a um, scarf pattern. And for the socks, of course, I have different sizes uh, and for the scarf, it's customizable kind of but it's an accessory so it's so different but if I were to ever make a sweater pattern or anything of a wearable garment I would for sure want to have a lot of size inclusivity because I feel like it's just not okay to publish something that is not accessible for everybody and then the same person added as well also being more accepting that all races ages and genders can knit and not just certain people yes I think that this is a big prejudice because, for example, I talked with some uh, guys that said that they would like to try knitting but they are just too scared to to see like the reactions to it and I think that that is very very sad and that is something that I really hope will change soon and that I hope that we provide a safe space where, at least within the knitting community, uh, we are welcoming of everybody and then hopefully the outside world will, will, will follow eventually. Then someone from my knit club said, I especially think older knitters like to tell younger or newer knitters what you're supposed to be knitting and at your at, so supposed to be knitting at your level, like you're not allowed to knit more complicated things, let alone give someone advice. Yes. This is something that I have experienced a 
few times, especially in knitting shops. It happened to me that in one of my favorite knit shops I entered and that we talked about like knitting socks. The lady working there was asking me like, oh, so do you do tests, uh, test knits for socks then often? And I said like, mm, no, not really. Like I have not, I have been a test knitter a few times, but I, it's not really that I focus a lot of attention to. And then she was like, oh no, yeah, maybe you have to get a little bit better before you are able to be a test knitter for socks. And <laughs> I was like too embarrassed to, to say to her like, no, I don't really think it's that. I think that I'm good enough to be a test knitter. It's just that I don't want to. I prefer to just work on my own pace and not always be a test knitter for people, kind of. And I think that there is definitely something that has to do with age and with the feeling that younger people might be more inexperienced. And well, I'm very sure that she has had a lot of experience and has been knitting for way longer than I have. I think that it's just kind of funny and sad to see that People underestimate you a lot and that sometimes I do feel like yarn shops are not as accessible because I was pretty intimidated with them at, the, at first since a few of them are very welcoming and help you a lot but some of them are really giving me this elitist type of feel where yeah you're kind of shamed for the choices that you made and if you are someone that for example doesn't like to knit on circular needles are not welcomed in a are like judged for that and yeah i don't know i think that that with knitting shops there sometimes can be a bit of a generational difference and that is completely fine but i can also understand why people would not feel so welcome and yeah but again in general people are very very nice so don't worry too much but yeah it's just, it's it's an experience that i've had and it's interesting to see that that people Underestimate, underestimate you easily and also feel like there are these different grades that you can get to in the world of knitting and crochet like for example to be a pattern publisher would be like the highest thing possible before that like a, te a, a test knitter and stuff like that and for me that just doesn't really make a lot of sense like everybody's doing things at, that, at a different pace and people are making different choices so you might be publishing patterns but be not be a test knitter and where some people are brilliant knitters but choose to not publish patterns because it's not what they enjoy so everybody's doing stuff at their own pace and their own level and making their own choices in this i don't like it when people get annoyed when non-crafters -cra non call knitting crochet and vice versa yeah this is something also that i don't really care too much about if someone says like oh did you knit that scarf and it's actually crochet i usually say like yes i did and blah blah i crocheted it, this and this and this or sometimes i do mention it that i say like it's actually crochet but or it's actually knit but i do not get the fact that people are offended by it maybe it's also because i do both so i like both knitting and crocheting and i don't really care if people mess it up because i do both so it's fine but some people especially on tiktok sometimes i see crafters that are like really getting offended when people will call something knit instead of crochet and yeah i mean for me it's not really that big of a deal i love smaller crocheters and influencers because you can just dm them if you have a question yes i love that as well and although i'm making a pattern now from the biggest knitting creator ever which i do really love i love petite knit and uh, my favorite knit things knitwear for example but i definitely want to also follow more patterns from smaller creators and support them because i just feel like it's very important to not only have a few big creators and to surround myself with a lot of smaller creators as well and it's definitely a huge advantage that you're just able to dm someone and uh, have a closer connection with them. There seems to be a lot of tension between those who do continental versus English style. Yep. Also one of these things where it's a discussion that I just don't really get so much. Like, why are we comparing ourselves so much? And yeah, I don't know. It's just do whatever works for you. And uh, I do like to really learn a lot from others. So if I see someone knitting in a different way than me, I love to ask them about what type of technique they use exactly and how it works. 
because I think that I can learn something from it myself but in no way should we be judging each other for the methods we are using and yes some methods are faster than others like in general continental knitting is faster than English style knitting but who says that we all want to be very fast knitters anyways so yes let's not do this judging thing I think older knitters tend to be a bit rude with new knitters like we can make videos about it or design stuff because we aren't pro but if it weren't for the new knitters uh, and the pandemic knitters making videos about how to start and what to do lots of us wouldn't knit at all yes exactly this i couldn't agree with it more <laughs> there is space for everyone on the internet and uh, no matter if you are a newer knitter or an older knitter share your stuff if you want to there's so much drama around patterns plagiarism especially for basic items yeah it's something that i found find pretty difficult to deal with because like with a lot of creative things in the world i wouldn't say everything has already been done but a lot of things have already been done and that's why with m the patterns that, patterns that i have designed i do not really feel the need to bring out basic items because it's not something that i feel like i am the best at i'm not the best at making um the most fluttering basic uh, construction of something I feel like my strong point as a designer is more in creativity and in color work and in designs like that but I totally feel like if you want to make a basic design that you should feel free to get it out in the world and there is also a lot of demand for basic items because they suit a lot of people's style and people can wear them with a lot of different things but yeah the plagiarism part is something that it's very difficult because on one hand I think it's a huge problem uh, like there's a huge plagiarism problem in the knitting world but that for me is especially that big fast fashion companies <laughs> are copying designers work and are selling it for a ridiculous price and that for me is a big problem and plagiarism with other people yes of course it happens and uh, people make tutorials about patterns like paid patterns um, and that is very problematic as well but it's on a very different level and yeah it's difficult this but please let me know what your thoughts about um, this are because I also don't know everything and I'm also just someone who has my own opinions but they can change and they're not always the best so feel free to express your own opinion about it in the comments everyone learned from someone else and knowledge is universal and should be shared so we all can grow yes exactly this <laughs> <laughs> to some extent it's very welcoming for example i'm on a knitting discord and people there are really they really support each other when they have questions or something it's tiffany Liu's discord i have also been on this discord and it's very amazing and also i'm trying to make some knitting friends on instagram but it's hard the most unwelcoming part to me seems to be the pattern making community people also don't want your advice if you don't have a ton of experience yes the Discord services I definitely agree with. I think that Tiffany Lou's Discord is very amazing and made me feel very welcome as a newer knitter. And it's one of the reasons I think that some of, some people are here on my channel as well because I shared a video there in the Discord and people watched it. So that's really amazing. True, the pattern making community is definitely harder. Um, I have followed a few patterns that I didn't love and I messaged the creator about it and some of them are very... Or like I didn't message like a crit critical thing I just asked a few questions and some pattern makers get offended very easily and others take the criticism very well or like the feedback um, very well and also like if you've ever purchased a pattern from me and have something like some type of feedback or something you don't understand feel free to message me I swear I won't bite you um, and yeah I think that in general being able to take critique is um, important as well if you're putting yourself out there I think yarn artists are like a family once it's cool once it's like you would like to kill each other <laughs> yes it's kind of true lots of people demand test knitters to be paid in cash or supplies but also get mad if small designers only offered a reduced size range because they can't afford to pay diff test knitters of different sizes so I feel like it can be quite hard to release patterns as a small desi des designer there are size 
inclusive and not explo exploitative during test needers test needing uh yeah this is a very difficult topic and paying your test needers is something that i i have a few different opinions on and that it's starting to like it changes a lot because i know that people have very different views on it and i think all of them have something good in them and also something bad and it depends a lot on the person but i can only say personally if i uh, would have the chance eventually i would be i would really love to be able to afford some type of like uh, reward for test knitting and that would be like the yarn or um, something else in that sense but for a lot of small designers we can just not afford to be to think like that and to offer that and I think that's why if you as a knit or crochet designer as a pattern designer decide to have uh, testers and do not have the means to pay them then you should also give them a lot more freedom and be a lot more forgiving and that's what I've always done when I have people testing my patterns that it's all about communication so if someone messages me saying that they are not able to to make it in the end that's fine like stuff like this and you have to be a lot more forgiving and uh, I do not mind doing it at all because I love all my testers so much and I am very very grateful for the fact that they were willing to test something with no pressure basically so I really hope that this video was interesting for you to watch I barely made any progress on my sweater because I was talking way too, way too much but in general this is a very difficult topic and I myself I'm not sure if I was able to express my own opinion about it in the best way possible so like I said before feel free to talk about your own experiences and um, just know that your experiences are valid and that I really value your opinions and your points of view on um, these topics so if you like this video please give it a like and subscribe because then you'll know exactly when I upload a new video so I will see you again in the next video. Till that time, stay safe. I love you all a lot. Doei!